and we are live ladies and gentlemen good morning good morning good morning my name is michael dane and you are here with us with what did prince do this week this is a special show because our host the great d'angela is she's we gave her the night off so she's out handling some business doing her thing and we want to say salute to her and send much love but today we're going to have myself I'm going to be joined by some special guests and I'm going to bring in one of our partners today if I can sir how are you Zachary sir how are you doing I'm good how are you I'm doing good man I'm excited to be here good morning everybody in the chat come on in and uh, as we always do we always start this thing off with some music man we, we get into the vibe and uh, we are continuing to uh, spotlight some madhouse related type music. So with that said, we'll get into this. This is Cape Horn, the great Eric Leeds, and the Times Squared album. What's up? And we'll, as, as we do this, we're gonna say what's up to all our people in the chat. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning, D. What's up, Christina? Good to everybody. Sandra, what's going on? Cassandra was the first one. She was here early. <laughs> I love it. And of course, Web Diva Vanessa, what's going on, family? Yes, yes. Trey, how you doing? The fam, it's my mom's birthday today, but I'm here for a little while. Oh, we appreciate that. And happy birthday to moms. Happy birthday. Yeah. All right. All right. Y'all going to do like a little party or a cake or something. You know? But uh, with that said, man, Zachary, how are we doing this morning? Not bad. Yeah. It's uh, I'm, I'm in uh, Columbia, Maryland, and it's warming up. I had to turn the fan on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little hot over here, and we're gonna get today's conversation might be a little hot. It might. It's gonna get steamy. <laughs> I get a little hot up in here. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna be talking about some some more of the uh, adventurous Prince songs. Uh, interesting timing that D'Angelo is not here today, but I'm gonna yeah, <laughs> yeah, leaving the leaving the show to two men on two uh men. On, on on for vibrator and g-spot that's very lord, interesting lord well actually <laughs> we're gonna break up the break up our energy a little bit and we'll nice. welcome our, our other special guests into the room violet brown how you doing this morning uh oh we can't hear you my fault. it's my fault i muted my mic <laughs> how you doing violet Okay, some weird technical difficulties. Maybe it was because y'all are going to be talking about vibrator and G spot. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Felt a disturbance. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we are talking about Prince. So, you know. yeah. Look. Now, we want to salute to D'Angelo. This again, we want to acknowledge Cape Horn, but in the spirit of Under the Cherry Moon, when my man Prince said, "This looks a little weak." You mind and then they switch up the song so we're gonna switch it up we, yeah we got it <laughs> we, we, this, this is a little party atmosphere this is saturday morning wake up God damn it. all right now this is also eric lee's and prince uh, i believe this is six and a half this is a B-side from the 6, 12-inch. I just Eight. randomly picked up this 12-inch, actually. Really? Uh, yeah, I just it just happened to see it. It was a uh, record store day. I just happened to see it on the shelf, and I never see Madhouse. So Wow. Do you remember yeah. how much you paid for that? Not much, to be honest. I think it was like 10, 12 bucks. It wasn't bad. I Usually, oh, if it's nice. anything Prince-related, it goes up. But, yeah to steal right. yes sir all right we'll buy for one second and we just started here what's up to everybody in the chat room mm -hmm. 
All right, we're going to fade that out. All right, well, now I'm ready. Now we're ready to get this thing started. So let's jump in and do our thing here. All right, so, bye. Yeah. What did Prince do this week? Take your comment off. Sorry about that. Uh, this is a slow read of Prince Studio Sessions by Dwayne Tudal through an interactive weekly online book club series. And we do this every Saturday. For me, it's every Saturday morning at 9. But for you on different coasts, it's a little different. But me, I got to get up early in the morning looking for another Prince love. Love of Prince. So let me, let me clear that up. Anyway. All right, we're gonna keep it going. I'm I'm doing double duties here. I'm looking at the chat and I'm doing the slides and I'm talking. So you know, bear with a brother. But let's get some of the house cleaning out the way. The estate of Prince Rogers Nelson is not affiliated, associated, or connected with what did Prince do this week book club series. Nor has it endorsed or sponsored the what did Prince do this week book club series. Further, the Prince estate. Uh, well, the estate of Prince Roger Nelson has not licensed any of the electoral property, property to the producers, advertisers, or directors of this particular show. So, in other words, they ain't got nothing to do with this. All right. So, there you go. What did Prince do? Again, we're going week to week, not date to date. So, we go from Saturday to Sunday of 1983. Of course, if you would like to follow the schedule, there's the link there, and also you can scan the QR code, all that good stuff. D'Angela has her stuff tip top. Like, I love it. I love it. Because if it was me, I'd be like, you can just find us at bubbly bubbly wop wop whoopie whoop. But to be clear, you do not need the extended edition of the book to participate, though I do have that. Shout out to Dwayne. Well, you can follow us on the regular edition. You can also have the book in hand. You can have the ebook. There's the audio book. There's a lot of different versions of this out there that you can get into. Uh, of course, this will always be archived on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Polish Solid. I'm saying that right. So, yeah. And, and what's up, chat? We see y'all. They're showing you a lot of love in there, Violet. They're showing you a lot of love. In the chat. And, of course, there is the hashtag, what did Prince do? Wait, what did Prince do this week? So I don't know if I, they didn't come out right, but there you go. They got all that good stuff, man. So, all right. We started things off with a little bit of Cape Horn this morning. Eric Leeds, you got to love it. Uh, real quick, just to go, because we got y'all in the room. I, I just got to ask, like, are you a fan of this album? Have you listened to it? If, if, have you listened to it in a while? I'll start with uh, Violet. I have not listened to it. I'm a fan of Eric Leeds, but no, I have I haven't checked this one out. Okay, you you, you should check this one out. There's some, there's some good stuff on here, definitely, uh, Mr. Zachary. You know, I I haven't either. And honestly, the whole like that whole side of Prince's music has been kind of a blind spot for me. I actually like you know I I mentioned I grabbed Madhouse the other week because I just kind of started getting into into Madhouse, and it's it's great. I, it's kind of like I don't know why. I haven't checked this out, I guess, because I'm like not that much of a jazz guy, but I'm trying to be more of a jazz guy. And um, and everything I've heard of Times Square is really good. Actually, the last time I was on the show, D'Angela played a little bit of another track from Times Square. And I went to Discogs while it was playing. And then I immediately closed the Discogs window because it was like one hundred dollars for, <laughs> for a record. So wow. maybe it'll get a repress. That would be great. OK. Yeah, it's a, it's a great album. It's kind of almost like maybe an unofficial Madhouse album. I believe a lot yeah. of the tracks that were going to be used for Madhouse stuff. But, you know, I think it lets uh, Eric stretch out a little bit as well. Um, so I think he had two albums, two solo albums on Paisley Park, uh, this being the first one. But this has some, uh, one of the songs on here was the Dopamine Rush, uh, which, is, which is really cool. I think it's an edited version of a, a longer suite yeah, I know uh, that from the bootlegs for sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, some not that stuff. I listen to bootlegs. If any. hilarious, <laughs> right? We believe that. What's a bootleg? 
All right. And uh, let's see. We just want to go through some of our stuff here. All right. So we're here at week 21, 1983. I believe we are covering the pages of 87 through 90. Uh, so what did Prince do this week? He did three studio visits. So I had two songs that were tracked with an asterisk. Back to, and then I'm going to make this a little bigger so I can see. This is the week. Listen, is this the week in Purple Rock? Uh, this was what Prince did this particular week. So from the 23rd through the 28th, and we can see we've got Possessed, which we talked about last week, which he started last week, Possessed and G-Spot. I will say before we get into these songs, as much as we, we can only cover what's in the book, but I wonder what happened this week that inspired these songs because my man had must have been busy. Like he was in a definitely in a different space. What was going on? Because it's an interesting week of music. All right. So yeah, three studio visits Tuesday, May 24th, 1983, the Kawa Trail Home Studio at the crib. Uh possessed overdubs, Prince Engineer Don Bats assumed. And then uh, what we're going to do now, we're just going to get into the book and pick up. We'll pick up a little bit of what we were talking about last week because we're going to be jumping into Possessed. And so I'm going to jump to I'll, I'll start with 87 here. This is Tuesday, May 24th. Prince overdubs. And then here's a quote from Matt Fink. It says Prince could walk into a studio and play full difficult parts in one take that were just streaming from his soul. It was an incredible thing to watch. He got to that level. I just don't know too many people that obtained that really. And it says additional overdubs reportedly done on this date. The track would eventually contain background vocals by Jill Jones, but it's unclear if that was done on this date or on another date. And one of the things we talked about last week was sort of what were, what were our preferences or versions of this song, you know, dating back to Obviously, the movie, the live uh, performance there on Princeton Revolution Live. And so now I got you two here, if you could. I mean, and, and this answer will determine if you stay on the show or not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Violet, uh, what's your thoughts on Possessed? Is there a version that you love? And, and be clear, I think you know, there's the movie version, what you hear in the movie. There is obviously the studio recording. And then there's sort of the live version. Live. Live, okay. And I did want to add on the Eric Lee's thing. I have seen him live in the last few years. I'm mm. a madhouse person and all that kind of stuff. I'm okay. scared to death of him. So I don't really want him to know that I, he he's one of the few people that really does, um, he intimidates me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> like taking a picture with him like. <laughs> but yeah, I'd say live. Okay. Well, well, why does he intimidate you? I don't, it's his demeanor because his talent is amazing, like everybody else that played with Prince. But he's just got, he definitely says whatever the heck he's thinking. And he's a little a cranky. Of, yeah. <laughs> like, really, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I, I get super nervous. He's one of the few I get real nervous around. Yeah. Every interview I've ever seen with him, he's like, well, I didn't really care for Prince's music. <laughs> you know, just, uh, always just like, just which, uh, which I respect, you know, because like, no, everybody else is so different. And, and Eric Leeds is just like, well, it wasn't my thing, but you know, it was a job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I take it as Eric, he's just, um, he's a jazz boy, right? Yeah, he's, like he's, he's, yeah. He's a, yeah. yeah a jazz musician. And they are always, I'm not going to put them in a box, but they're so used to being at a high level. I would right. imagine like, okay, they're like, yeah, that's Prince. He dope. But, you know, yeah, he's I, no Miles I Davis. Yeah. Okay. That part, yeah. 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 So, and he, he he's kind of he's he has this sort of uh excuse my language, he's a lot of anti-dick writing energy, which <laughs> I, I can respect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he was amazing. What I like about Jesse Johnson, too, you know, he he'll he's he's a straight shooter. Mm -hmm. I, I I appreciate that. It's still, there's respect there, but you know they're gonna they're gonna call it like they see it. Absolutely. Uh, well, Zach, I don't know if you yeah. uh, gave us a preference. Well, I know this is a fraught conversation, um, so I'm gonna go with I think so. I mean, honestly, 
okay, here's the less, here's Dude, the like more co- more go. cowardly version. The more cowardly version is I, I I love the 82 one and the 84 one equally for different reasons. But if mm-hmm. I have to take it, but I, I, I have to take a stand. And so I'll say the one that I think the 84 with vocals that came out on Purple Rain Expanded Edition, that mm-hmm. felt like a discovery because, you know, we'd all heard the instrumental one in Purple mm-hmm. Rain. And like, I didn't even know for sure. I mean, I assumed that there was probably a vocal track in in the vault somewhere, but I didn't know for sure that there was that we'd ever hear it. And so hearing it and then hearing how weird it was, like the thing you need to know about me is that I'm a big fan of weird prints. I okay. like, you know, I love anything, anytime that is like a, there's like a breakdown or a, you know, like the the hallway speech in computer blue or the, mm-hmm. the moaning in automatic or anything like that. And so, you know, possessed 84 possessed has that in spades. And it's, it's like, it's creepy in some ways, you know, he really, he, he took the possessed the you know, the 82 possessed is like, you know, he's speaking figuratively. It's about how horny he is basically, but the 84 possessed, he's like, it's like the, something out of the exorcist, you know? <laughs> so that's what I, 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 I just really dig that. And um, honestly, I, I, I know that there's a lot of things that weren't great about, and I know that the, there, there is a better purple rain expanded edition in, you know, in the, the multiverse somewhere we had the one we got was was compromised but i mean just the fact that we got possessed with vocals we got we can fuck which is like oh my god you mm-hmm. know um mm-hmm. so that's still that's still an album that's really close to my heart just in right terms on. of what what came out all right yeah you know and me personally i i just have to fall in line with the live version it was, that was the i don't know if that was the first version i guess the movie was but it just connected with my soul and he's just up there and just breaking it down. Just like, ah, uh, I didn't expect that when I saw it, I was just kind of like, wow, this guy, everyone is so different. Like you would not, yeah. if you hear the live version, which is like pure James Brown funk, mm-hmm. you would not think, I mean, the 82 version is kind of that, but it's not really. And then yeah, the yeah. 84 is like a totally different. It's, it, it could be three different songs. Yeah. Yeah, that it, I'm glad you, you brought that up because that is something that Prince can do where he can take his songs and really kind of flip them and still be the same song, but gives it a different spin. And it doesn't feel and each spin worked like it didn't feel like he was. Oh, let me just throw a James Brown kind of feel to this. And this was like, no, nah, this was like an authentic type of feel. I, I was going to bring up to say uh, real quick to deviate. Uh, my son is 15. I just gave him the sign of the times album uh, uh and sent him a record player right because he wanted he's like dad send me some music and so i a week later i asked him this the other day i said well what did you think and he was like he was like yeah i liked it it was, it was really good i sent him sign of the times purple rain and slime the family stone greatest hits and so he goes yeah there was one of the songs i think it was the second song on the second side or something he was like strange relationships or something i was like oh okay it's like, I just was playing it over and over. And then he was like, well, wait, yeah, he, he started singing, but he was singing, uh, I could never take the place of your man. Oh. And I was like, ah, oh. he's like that song right there. And I was, so I was telling him, I was like, dude, there's like, a, they just came out with a version that he did back in like 79 or something. Oh, and it's kind of different, but he was like, you would be tripping out if you heard how that song sort of evolves, plus the live version. And so it made me think of like this. Yeah. Yeah. Prince can take these songs, man, and transform them. That and made so- me think of his um the third eye girl version. Totally different. Like right. a yeah. kind of thing, which That's I right. love, 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 love that version. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. So uh, uh yes. Yeah. So with that said, let's get to the vibrators. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that transition right in. Um Ooh. Listen. And let me be clear. Let me say this too. This is a family show, <laughs> but today it might get a little. Oh, so yeah, so we, we might be getting in some adult conversations. So you know, I just want to forewarn that because some people had their kids watching or they playing in the That's car right. and stuff. And I know if I was playing in the car and all of a sudden the man just said, "We're gonna throw them a vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just put that disclaimer out there. All right. 
So May 1983, date uncertain. I'm going to call it at the crib. Vibrator, basic tracking, overdubs, producer Prince, artist Vanity Six, engineer Don Batts assumed. Zachary, sir, would you mind? Do you have the book? Actually, let me ask you that. Yes, yes, I do. Well, if you could turn your page to <laughs> chapter, and we're going to read today. Saints, <laughs> we're doing verse May 1983 <laughs> on page 1989. Excuse me. Let me stop. On page 87, <laughs> Zach, if you could take us and start with vibrator, please. Okay. Uh, so it starts with a quote here from Jill Jones. I remember being at the house and I remember when Denise, Vanity, had this massager that she used and it was for her back because she had a bad back and it sounded like a lawnmower. <laughs> Uh, just let me know when you want me to stop. Uh, one of the hallmarks of the Vanity Six album was the humorous skit during If a Girl Answers, Don't Hang Up, and Prince decided to continue in that direction with a song called Vibrator, which was about a vibrating personal massager. The lyrics repeatedly explained that her lover's services were no longer necessary because her vibrator makes me feel so good. Oh my God, laughs. It was definitely for the second Vanity Six album, recalls Brenda Bennett. Upon hearing the track again, you can hear in her performance that she had really improved. But as far as I could tell, there was no way he would release it. And he hasn't. That is Jill and Vanity at the end of the song, um, meaning in the, the skit um, with the, the shopkeeper. Um, you want me to keep going or you want me to? Um, if you here? want or if uh, Violet, do you want to jump in or? I have to get my copy. Oh. It's over there. Don't worry Go about ahead. it. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> nice little. I, I like how she's like. I, I don't have that one, but no, I do have it. It's just I have it. I have an e copy, and I didn't open my iPad. I can do that, but I'm just messing with you. I actually have. I'll a just copy go to that. Listen to the voice. Oh, oh nice. Okay. I'll just go to the end of the uh, of the section here. They went in the studio. And I think Susan Moonsey was there. And I remember just laughing, recalls Jill Jones. How crazy is that? I had forgotten about that. That was when we were all getting along. So yeah, like uh, mm. Jill, Susan, and Vanity, we all know why that's weird that they were all in the house together. But in May 1983, the there was a there was a a detente and they they were they were all right. Uh that was at Prince's House in Minneapolis, it's right before the purple rain stuff started going because because Van Vanity hadn't left yet. We were all in the studio together and it was easy to work because you could do your part and then go upstairs and make tea. Prince mm -hmm. once again played a similar character as he had on If a Girl Answers during the four minute comedic section, which concludes with Vanity achieving an orgasm at the end of the song. Jones recalls her reaction when that section was taped. After I recorded my part, I ended up leaving the studio and went upstairs and she went down there and then that thing just makes loud grinding noise. As I remembered, it was like a lawnmower, and she alluded to me that they did this experimentation thing. Anything for art. I was watching TV, and it was really loud, and it didn't take a genius. There were a lot of things that went on like that in that studio, for sure. Mm. For sure. All right. Um, yeah. Lord. So let me back it up. So they're saying that uh, not only did they record this song, but let's just say maybe they did a skit. Yeah. With the, with yeah. the actual her batteries go yeah get and you hear that so it. actually i i have a i have a quick little story about that so i'd, I'd heard that story obviously from the book but um at the at the triple threat conference the other week this is a little bit of a I, i'm realizing now that this is gonna uh sound like i'm flexing a little bit but um so at the at the triple threat conference there was a speaker's dinner the night before and um, Jill was there. She was like the guest of honor. And so um, we were like talking about Vibrator. And and at that dinner, Jill, she might have said this somewhere else, but Jill said something that I've never heard her say, which is that the, um, the you know, it was for her back. So it was like, I think it was like a big flat, uh, you know, mm -hmm. like you lay on top of it, almost like a vibrating bed kind of a situation okay. and she said that it took like a ton of batteries and so in the skit at the end i had always just thought this was a joke because you're supposed to picture this big monster you know uh i'm trying to keep this a family show but i always <laughs> thought it was a joke where she's putting in the batteries and she's like one two three 
or you know it's like so many batteries that it's like imagine how big this thing is but um apparently that's also based on reality and it really just was this vibrator which was much more of a orthopedic <laughs> device <laughs> uh really did take that many batteries Oh, that helps because she was counting and I was, she, she, I was trying to figure out what we were counting. <laughs> yeah. I was afraid. Like, vibration are these D big. batteries? Get, are they, are they mean, triple like, A's? What kind of machine is this? It sounded like a coffee <laughs> right. like, like, oh, Lord. I was afraid. I'm not going <laughs> to. I think I've only heard this once a long time ago, so I have to really go back and listen to it. You that. should listen to it again. Prince is really funny in it, doing that character where I know what it's for. She's trying to act like, oh, I just need these batteries for this massager. Uh-huh, okay, massager. Yeah. It's really funny. <laughs> yeah, he says, my back is acting up. It does that every time my boyfriend mm -hmm. is out of town. <laughs> <or something like laughs> yeah, it's really it's funny. It's the, uh, yeah, it's the voice that he does in If a Girl Answers, which okay. uh, it's like kind of Jamie Starr, I guess. But also, you know, a little more feminine. I, I think of it as uh, Prince's drag persona. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's <fair>. kind of. <laughs> he, he, he uh, as funny as that cat seemed to be, man, like he could have had a whole sort of comedic. For sure. Like really yeah. into it, For you sure. know, uh, even so early on, he was extremely funny, it seems like. But... Yeah, yeah. All right. I think that's uh, why so many people think that voice is Morris on If right. Real Answers, because it's like it doesn't fit the, you know, Prince coming out of the smoke in the Dave Chappelle skit. You're, <laughs> you know, he was so his persona was so serious. But I mean, even live, though, he was, you know, he would clown around. Um, did, did, just to just to go there for a second. I mean, how do you think that would have affected his uh, image if he would have sort of introduced these elements into his own albums, like the skits, and funny stuff. Like, would he not be considered serious or something? Or I was curious how he leaves that for the other. Yeah, piece. He doesn't put any of that on him, from what I can remember. I think I, the only I thing do. that I would say is Lady Cab Driver, but that, it's like a, it's almost like it's played for laughs, but it's not. not really. Yeah, no, right. it's not silly in the same way as if a girl answers or yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's a different vibe. And I think that's what it's about, really, is vibe, because you're in a certain place when you're listening to certain things. And that just reminded me the thing I was gonna say about vibrator to me, it sounds like a song like that Des Dickerson would have written, the the mm. vibe of it, and it's like that it it's like an it's old, new wavy. Yeah. It, yeah. it just I don't know, it has a certain sound to it. I'll, I'll it's not my favorite. I'll just say that. <laughs> it kind of, it kind of like, it has that little organ. It's kind of bite the beat. It, it, mm. it, if you were to compare it to a song from the first Vanity Six album, it, it does kind of have a, more of a bite the beat feel. Okay. Yeah, it's the skit for me that, that's that. Yeah. I come back to because um, Jill's really funny in it too. And I, but I also think when I um, when I wrote about Vibrator, I I said that. Uh, I think it's Vanity's best, not just singing performance, but acting performance. Uh, I mean, yeah. she's like the way her tone is just all over the place, but in a way that's like really amazing. She goes yeah. from, you know, being like uh, kind of huffy and, and frustrated to like deranged and, you know, and, and then and then obviously the the orgasm at the end of it. It's uh, it's a tour de force. Uh, so it, it is like, there's a lot about that second Vanity Six album that, you know, again, it's that multiverse thing. It's like, uh, I, if only it had yeah. actually happened. Um, I, I love Apollonia Six, the, that album in a lot of ways too, but I, I wish we could have gotten another Vanity Six record. Uh, love sexy here with a comment snitching on themselves. Uh, they said that skit from Vibrator sounds just I assume just like a scene from a Vanessa Del Rio scene from the 1980s. Totally classic skit in that song. What's Vanessa Del Rio love sexy? You know, well, we know. It's a famous, uh, it was a famous adult uh, porn actor, actress back in the day. Vanessa Del Rio. How do I know that? I don't know. I do research. Uh, with that said, um, any other comments? Uh, Things we want to talk about vibrator. Anything we want to get get off our chests. I have a I have some theories about. Um, so you were mentioning Michael, like what was going on in Prince's life 
that made uh, th- that produced these particular two songs in this particular week. The hell of a week. Uh, so I yeah. So I have a more I have a more concrete one for um, for G Spot um, because I do actually think that there was a that was sort of like in the zeitgeist at the time. I think there was a book that came out. I'm looking at the I I, I wrote about this a long time ago. So I'm, I'm trying to refresh my memory. Um, okay. There was a, there was a best-selling book in 1982 uh, called the G spot and other recent discoveries about human sexuality. And so I don't know if Prince had that book, but I mean, it was probably like, they were probably writing about it in women's magazines. And, you know, I think um, it, he became aware of it in some, in some way. Um, and then this is more of a, this is more of a coincidence. Um, but I think it's interesting that, uh, 1983 was also kind of a watershed year for the vibrator, like in, you know, the development of the actual device. Cause that same year, the famous, the, it didn't get famous until, um, or, you know, famous in mainstream circles until the famous, Sex in the City episode, but the the rabbit, the uh, vibrator with a external, you know, piece on it, uh, that actually came out in 1983. Now, I don't necessarily think, unless Prince was like really hitting up the sex shop every week, I don't necessarily think that it was a direct inspiration. But it is a really interesting, um, hmm. you know, coincidence. And then one more, even more of a coincidence, when I was writing about this piece, you know, I'm always trying to find, like you can see on the on the screen here, this is just a, a random vibrator ad that I just thought was hilarious um, and like visually striking. So I use that, but I'm always trying to find photos to break up the, the wall of text. And so I think at some point I, I typed in Vanity 6 vibrator in a Google image search um, with safe search off uh, and... Uh, <laughs> And in fact, there is a vibrator that you can buy. It's on the market and it's it's purple and it's called the vanity. And I don't I know that that would probably not have made evangelist Denise Matthews happy. But I think that somewhere vanity is is smiling. I think that's the (laughs) vanity. My goodness. I hope the estate doesn't. They try to. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know that that I don't know what the estate would. They'll be all right. They'll be right. Maybe I guess as long as it's not in the shape of the symbol. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Andy Ward exactly. said that in fact, in fact, Jill said that they were looking at a magazine article together that inspired for G Spot. So yeah, that that's in the that book. totally makes sense. I figured you were going to that next because that's definitely in the book. Oh, okay, cool. I did not. It must not be in the section that we read today because I oh is totally well, so the, the one that I have, like I said, it's in the e copy and it's definitely in there. She oh, said okay. they were having a conversation. So she read a magazine article. I don't remember the name of the magazine, but they were talking about it. And then he left and then he came back with G Spot. And now G Spot, that, that's a song right there. That's a funky song. <laughs> I really <laughs> did that one. That was a good one. That was a good that. one. So real quick, just to Both finish versions. off the uh, vibrator. The song has also been sampled in other Prince yeah. things over the years, specifically in the songs four and seven from the uh, Madhouse Eight, Dopamine Rush, Times Squared, and then Orgasm yeah. on Come Out. Yep. That's so, the one I know. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it, it, obviously for Prince, maybe I'm just speculating that he didn't forget that. Like sure. that, that recording session and them songs from that day, mm. it's like, yeah. I need to, I need to put this, put that in this one. Da, 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 da. So that's very interesting. Like he held on to that. You know? I always wonder what vanity what Denise thought about. thought about that, you know? Um, Cause I, I know that on come she's credited as she knows <laughs> it feels very <laughs> pointed, you know? Um, I always wonder like how that was received. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, did she get paid for those or? Yeah, good question. Yeah, that's a that's a very good question. Anything for art is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, vibrator. Uh yeah, check it out. Um, you know, there you go. And also 
D'Angelo has got these in here, and this is uh, from the uh, Twitter thread from 2020, uh, June 15th to the 28th, and it was about come. Uh, so you definitely want to check that out. Go back in your archives. And also save the date. Coming soon. <laughs> In August of 2024 is uh, the virtual symposium for Come 30. Man, so that should be very exciting. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Come 30. Say say less. So yeah, check that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to restrain. Clearly. <laughs> Keep it moving, Mike. I know we talked about vibrator here. Uh, from, and Zach, this is from your blog? Yep. Yeah, I've, it's been, I mean, this will tell you how uh, how slow I've been working lately. But yeah, it's from 2021. Um, at this time, I'm slightly slower than real time. But it's, it's so embarrassing that Prince could record music faster than than I can write about it. But but it is what it is. Prince was was Prince. <laughs> but yeah, um, so I, yeah, I wrote about Vibrator. And there's a little bit about G-Spot in there too. I'm saving G-Spot until... So my for those who don't know, my blog is I'm, I'm going through Prince's catalog or as much of his catalog as I can uh, chronologically and writing mm. about every, every song. So G-Spot, I think I'm going to save until the version that came out on Jill's album. So it's probably going to be a couple years before I get to that one. But I did touch on it a little bit because they were... They were so they were recorded so close together, and then they were also, um, you know, so kind of thematically linked. It was uh, his uh, he had a week of just exploring new developments in women's sexuality in late May '83. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna keep moving. We're gonna get to G Spot, and, and I'll start reading here a little bit. So this is May of 1983 again. Doesn't have a clear date uh, of when these were recorded. But G Spot, G Spot, basic tracking and overdubs, Qua Trail Home Studio once again. Of course, Prince is the artist. Excuse me, Prince is the producer. Artist, it says Prince slash Revolution. Uh, and here's a quote from Bobby Z. G Spot, we used to jam on that all the time. Prince continued working in his home studio, and during today's recording, he tried something different. When he was laying the track for G Spot. He went and got a saxophone, remembers Jill Jones. Yeah. Uh, here we go. So he got the sax out, and he already knew the parts that he wanted. I couldn't remember because I was like, what the hell? Didn't matter. I'm like the perfect cheerleader for that dude. It's great. You want to do brain surgery later? You can do it. You can do it. Come on. It's a couple of little knives. You can do it. But there he was, and he didn't stop until he got it the way he wanted it. The basic riff was Prince on a saxophone, and it was almost as big as he was. Um, Prince's attempt on the sax, sax was quickly replaced with keyboards, which would eventually be replaced by more elaborate horn section featuring saxophone by Bob Menzer, Chris Hunter, and Roger Rosenberg. Uh, John Faddis and Randy Becker, I'm saying his last name right, on trumpet, and Jim Poog. On trombone. G Spot was a groove Prince had the band work on many times. As Bobby Z recalled, G Spot was almost a time riff where it was like a song for the time or something. It had that synth thing and that lick. It was just the one tune he loved jamming on. The band circled around the main riff with Prince adding some spontaneous, spontaneous lyrics as if he were James Brown telling Maceo Parker to blow your horn and throwing a shout to JB's Mother Popcorn. Although the band may have rehearsed the track, it is unclear whether rather any of the revolution actually played on it in the studio. Prince often recorded overnight after the band had left, and because he could do it all himself, he did many of his songs on his own. Uh, it's another quote. When it was 3 o'clock in the morning and I tried to get Bobby Z to come out to the studio, sometimes he'd come, sometimes he would. So, G-Spot. When's the first time you guys heard that song? I was going to ask you. I don't know. You remember when? You... I've listened to it again recently, but I don't know the first time I heard it. I, the first time I heard it, it was on Jill's album. Okay. And they're both, hers is more polished, but they're both very dope. And the actually the bass licks are like automatic. 
that's what it reminds mm-hmm. me of. With Automatic is one of my favorite songs anyway. So okay, yeah, I heard it. Um, I heard Prince's version first. I think they're the same basic track. Um, he might have done some overdubs for Jill's, um, but yeah, that was when I started getting into the you know the uh, unreleased stuff and just going through this huge pile of MP3s. And um, mm-hmm. uh, what I remember is the the stuff that I had, there was the finished version, and then there were also separate tracks for the bass and a few other things. So there was just the bass track. Um, I, I guess randomly the multi-track must have leaked. Um, I don't know enough about like the the backstory of this to, to know. Um, somebody who's a little more knowledgeable in this area might know why there's multi-tracks for G-Spot, but... Um, but it is it's it's cool to hear just the bass part because yeah, like Violet says, the the bass is um it's great and I I love it whenever Prince plays the bass. Yeah, there's um I just remember there's also like a rehearsal version of this rolling around out there too that is absolutely funky as hell. Um, I think it's just like Prince and Revolution. Nice, but but just to the testament of yeah, it seemed like they did jam this song quite a bit. Which that means brown mark on bass, so that's real dope. Okay, I would yeah, like yeah. to hear that. Absolutely, man. And then uh, D'Angelo had a cool picture here that I think this came from Chaz, if I'm not mistaken. Um, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, this is. Uh, I think this is like a, a program from a music performance uh, back from uh, Lincoln Junior High School. And what's cool about this is if you zoom in and see the alto saxophone section right there with that star, the young man by the name of Prince Nelson <laughs> uh, on sax. Uh, yeah. Which is so crazy. it wasn't that out of this, out of, you know, it wasn't that crazy that he, cause that's a pretty, I mean, I don't play saxophone, but it, I would imagine it's a pretty simple lick to play. It sounds pretty like, you know, mm-hmm. you could, if you'd played in junior high and not since then, you could probably go back and figure it out enough. Yeah. That, that I would love to see Prince playing the sax. Like that would probably be a headbuster moment to be like, "Yo, it's playing, this guy's playing the horns." What? Yeah, I'm, I, and I'm thinking it says alto there, but if the saxophone was almost as big as him, it must have been, it must have been like a baritone sax. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I love the fact that he's like, you know what? I need to get this done. I'm gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? And, and he's got it. <laughs> He's got a sax available. And he's like, let's, let's go. And I love that Jill's like, yeah, I'm I'm cheerleading my man. Like, you got this, baby boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's dope, man. Uh, real quick, shout out. The, uh, the Adult Symphony Channel, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Stone Freak, we see you as well, sir. Annie War- Ward. Shout out to everybody in there in the chat. Um, but yes, yeah, so we're talking about G-Spot. Um uh, one thing I always thought about the Geo album is that I always felt like, I guess this was a single. I was about to say it wasn't a single, but it was a 12 inch, wasn't it? Was, was Geo? I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I just felt like this should have been. I, I actually, I felt like when I heard the album, I thought that should have been the lead single. Like to me, that just, obviously the title is a little wild, but just musically and the energy of it, I thought that would be a perfect sort of, and it feels like when I listen to it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a Prince song. Yeah. Like, it sounds mm-hmm. like it would be Prince. It would almost actually, I would say, it would have been perfect in Purple Rain. It would. Like, it would almost was. It, it's yeah. in the script. Oh. Um, if the, the draft, if you look the draft screenplay that um, that is online, which is like an early version from when Vanity was still supposed to be in it, um, I think instead of Darling Nikki, I think he mm-hmm. plays G spot. Um, so yeah, it's, it's weird. It's like, it was an almost, it was almost on vanity six, It was, but then mm-hmm. they broke up. It was almost on purple rain, but then he did darling Nikki instead. And then it finally came out. And I, you know, I feel bad for Jill got all of his like, <laughs> like right. three time hand me downs, you know, it's just like they recorded it in 83. The album doesn't come out until 87. Uh, mm-hmm. she really put up with a lot from that man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me add this. So the status here from the book, G-Spot, four minutes and 30 seconds, was released in 1987 on Geo Jones's only Paisley Park record. 
a single edit version, four minutes and two seconds, and a remix. I remember this was also released. The song was rehearsed with the revolution during the summer of 83 and was included in Albert Magnolia's early drafts of Purple Rain script, but removed before shooting began in November. It was also one of the tracks slated for the benefit show that Prince would perform in August. Ultimately, it would be included. It wouldn't be included in the film, and it doesn't appear to have ever been performed live by Prince. Uh, G Spot is listed as being recorded in May of '83, but there is a possibility that it may be from earlier, or even 1982. Uh, so very interesting. Um, well, let me just read this last part here. <clears throat> G-Spot was recorded before Prince's longtime engineer, Susan Rogers, worked with him, but she recalled a funny remnant that was possibly from the session. Downstairs in his home was a little utility room, and there was a little cartoon book sitting on top of his washing machine called Looking for the G-Spot or Where is the G-Spot? I got the impressions that this was something that somebody had given him and which had then inspired him to write the song. Lastly, it says <clears throat> other tracks that were rumored to have been recorded in Minneapolis during the summer of 83 are more difficult to date, including Climax, which is four minutes and 43 seconds, Electrocution, which is 12 minutes and 45 seconds, and Money, two minutes and 23 seconds, which he recorded for the time. It appears that the last two songs were written and recorded before 83 and will be covered in a future book. In this series, woo! I need to hear that electrocution. <laughs> I know that's I, that, I glossed right over. Um, yeah, I've, I've, you were right, Violet. I glossed right over. I have to, I, I will admit, I was rushing to read the pages before we started, and I thought I was a good skimmer and I glossed right over those, those parts. So, yeah, it was in the book. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, electrocution money. Climax. This guy's got songs we ain't even. Yeah. We ain't even heard. So when people say that there doesn't need to be a, another Purple Rain reissue, I don't know. I got to hear that 13 minute electrocution. Yeah. You, you ain't lying. You ain't lying. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. Any other sort of uh, musings on G Spot? Anybody in the mm -hmm. audience? One, one of his great songs, one of the great songs by Gio yeah. should mention. Uh, if you haven't had, if you haven't listened to that album, you owe it to yourself to give it a listen. There's some great stuff on there. And yeah, uh, Stone Freak. Yeah, Gio, it, they did Gio a little dirty. Because <laughs> she was, she was one of them, you know, she was there for a long time, putting in a lot of work. Yeah. You the funny her. thing I, is, is she's I, the character on Purple Rain. You know how she's standing there and she yeah. always loved him and she's just kind of in yeah. real life. It kind of mirrors that if you ask mm -hmm. me. Yeah. It's the wild thing about about Prince. It's just, and, and you know, she's always in my hair is like, he could be so like just nailing the dynamic to your face. You know, he'll, he'll just say, yes, this is our dynamic. You worship the ground I walk on and I can't really be bothered. Here's the song that I wrote about, <laughs> about it, you know, and, and it's just like, it, it's just the, the weird contrast between this like incredible self-awareness and just complete lack of emotional intelligence at the same time, somehow in the same person. It's, it's incredible. Well, I was really he, gesticulating he, he, he there. Was Sorry a Gemini. About that. He was a Gemini. So <laughs> yeah. There there's you go. A thing where you can <laughs> yeah. associate from things you, just you, yeah. know, you can act like you don't feel it because you actually don't feel it. That, that's yeah. how it works. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. That is so, I, I was just I'm trying to remember what I was watching last night. And it was, I was kind of thinking on the same lines, something, I don't know. I was watching the love sexy concert, but I can't think of what triggered that. But I, I thought that was interesting about Prince is like as much as, you know, I was thinking, yes, I was thinking his persona, of how he presented himself on stage and on records to a degree versus who he probably really was uh, were very completely different things. And sometimes it, it took a while early on when I got into Prince that I just assumed he was the guy on the records and particularly on stage when he was always laughing and smiling. But 
you can see it, but then you started to hear the stories sometimes. And it was like, you know, he can be hard on people. Like you didn't want to get it. You didn't want to be in his radar sometimes if you work with them. I, I couldn't understand. I was like, well, why wouldn't he like, but then I realized as I started really looking, I was like, you can see it peeking through a little bit, the pettiness or just as a certain look he'll do mm -hmm. that it'll crack for a second. And I'm like, yeah, he probably was like, he probably was going hard sometimes. You know, he was, you know <laughs> right. he was. but I would say, I would say that it was still him. It was just a different version of him. Like, yeah. So it, it was authentic because it really was how he was. That was just a part of how he was. And then right. on other days, he was a different way. So that's, and there that's had to be, Gemini thing. you know, there's a reason why people were, there's a reason why Joe was so drawn to him, you know, and put up with him for so long. Uh, cause the, 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 both of those things were very real. You know, he could, he mm -hmm. could make you feel really special and then he could be extremely cold, uh, to your face. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I was going on a tangent. I was, it was watch. I was watching the, uh, the last song on the first side of the love sexy show, uh, I'm tripping. Anastasia, when they do that song. Mm. And it's on the, that, you know, the uh, concert video. And it looks like at the end, he was about to go into a guitar solo or something where they break down the song at the very end. And it doesn't, he's streaming, but you can't hear I've it. heard that, yeah. And then he kind of like puts it down. I was really looking at his face and he looked like, he looked like he's like, I could see he was fresh. And then he just kind of <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like gives whoever it was the guitar. And then he just kind of goes up to both Miko and Levi as they're playing, mm -hmm. just kind of whispers in the ear. Like, yeah, I could see he's like, yeah, somebody get Nick fired. <laughs> oh, shit, we're going to wrist wrap it up, man. And it's, <laughs> oh, man. I was like, man, I, I was like, yeah, I can see it. Stuff happens. And you sometimes you could see like he's a person, like, yeah, yeah. this thing mm -hmm. go the way. But he's so professional. That he doesn't really allow the audience to understand what that is. He just plays it off, and you know, yeah, keep it moving. Tried, which is it was a, it's a TV broadcast. Like that's the definitive right. love sexy show for a lot of people, and yeah. he, you know, and there was a technical, a huge technical glitch in the middle of it. So that's that's pretty amazing too. Yeah, I mean, it speaks to his professionalism of being a performer, and, and he doesn't freak out when those things happen. He just rolls with it. You even see the footage where he'd be tripping or falling down or of course when the fans just get super all up on him and he just makes it a joke but i imagine he was probably like how the hell y'all let her get up <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> anyway <laughs> bringing it back so yeah. some good stuff going on in the comments by the way yes i uh, just want to just want to shout shout out um yeah rodney had some good points uh c lee hey c lee what's um, up c lee's said his c lee's comment makes me think about that movie Banshees of Inishirin. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So sometimes being an artist means that one must create emotional barriers from people to keep them from intruding on the art, especially if one completely submerges oneself in one's art. Ooh, okay, okay. I dig that. I dig that. And yeah, shout out to uh, Rodney. I see you when you brought up uh, the song Wednesday. Uh, it was also the one Jill Jones. Uh, did for the movie uh, yeah all and right yeah, just talking about all the different times that she was like almost in the spotlight but got passed over you know yeah. Yeah. and yeah in the in the quantum realm jill scott excuse me jill, see i'm doing jill <laughs> Jones. we love her too she's a superstar like she goes on to she is the the the, the one that sort of shines from the movie that everyone's just like oh. yeah get that out and she's just like so cool again uh, the triple yeah. threat like there were so many people uh, there were people who presented at triple threat who were not there every day and she was there every day that's and that true. was i was i was so impressed yeah i was that super true. impressed that is true all right so week 21 and i guess this is so far <clears throat> this year we've had 52 live shows uh we have one after show and then we've had 30 studio visits uh man this is just from the beginning of the year to where we're at now what almost at the end of may yes uh he's he's done more than most would 
do you know in, in a two year span, <clears throat> let alone just six months or something. Uh, 23 songs tracked. And here are some of the songs again Electric Intercourse, we've talked about Wonderful Ass, uh, Katrina's Baby Dolls, Strange Relationships, 1983, Jungle Love, Untitled Instrumentals, Chlorine Bacon Skin, My Summertime. These are my jams, my summertime thing, The Bird, Untitled Song. And then, of course, If the Kid Can Make. Go, hey, nobody. <laughs> oh, and, and it ain't over. Chocolate. <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> oh, man. Violet Kitty Cat. Boy, these songs. Uh, like velvet, that. Velvet. Oh, I'm velvet. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get that. Wow. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. My love belongs to you. Please. Promise to be true, moral majority, modern air, possessed, let's go crazy, vibrator, G spot. Whew. This is what one award ceremony, one TV show. And these are ones that we've already talked about. The tapings, uh, Solid Gold show, April 4th. Uh, the third annual Minnesota Music Awards, May 16th. And I think we're jumping into some of this stuff. We talked about this award show last week. Uh, the 1983 Minnesota Music Awards. And D'Angelo has found some great, uh, looks like, ads from the newspapers. Mm, that's cool. Uh, here, Yeah, so Monday, May 16th, 8 p.m. at the Carlton Celebrity Room. Tickets available at the Carlton and at Wax Museums. What was the price on that? Uh, it doesn't say. Hmm. I know they've got footage from those because they, they came out, uh, there was like clips um from the minneapolis news Vi violet are you in michael says you might be in the twin cities area is that are, yeah i'm in st right? paul okay. now but i'm from texas yeah yeah okay and i wasn't around for any of this that's not a minneapolis <laughs> answer <laughs> i'm from texas yeah. i'm from texas <laughs> i was just curious if you uh saw the the, there was like a local news thing that they showed um, I and I, it made it to Twitter um, with the, uh, they showed Prince after the time broke up, he was playing with the time uh, because, you know, Morris was uh, AWOL. Um, and I, I wish we could get, so it exists, but I just don't know, you know, if it's ever going to, how it's ever going to come out. Gotcha. That was from the I Minneapolis Music Awards. I just want to play. I guess it must have been the '84 one though, because '83 uh, Morris was still in the picture. Okay, okay. Was this? Are you are you talking about the one where it was like Prince and Jesse and? and yeah, yeah. I think that was the '84. It was either the Minneapolis or the Minnesota Music Awards, or it was the Minnesota Black Music Black, Awards. Yeah. I, one of them. Yeah, I remember this. Uh, so here's a comment from D. He said, "The looks Prince gave when upset with the band remind me of the look your moms gave when you were talking." In the children's choir at church, read. You're gonna get lit. You're gonna get lit up once you get home. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> that was my grandmother. Just a certain look. They look at you. And you just straighten up real quick, or it was gonna be some straightening when you got home uh, with that belt. Well, that was a different time. Just to, to off track for a second. Did y'all see the? There's a footage of Beyonce that dropped this week, and she was in concert. And she was singing. There's a fan. You can't. He's just out of frame, but he is screaming the song at her. Like you can't help but hear it, and it's almost overpowering her. And she just, she's so professional. And she's, like, ah, and she just kind of looks at him. <laughs> I always feel like she's the same way. She's so professional, but you could tell she ain't really with this. She's with the shits, but she don't want to mess up her bag. So she just gives that kid a look, like. Mm. And then she just jumped back into Beyonce and she smiles. I was like, <laughs> like, that's why she's so popular, man, because she could she could easily probably lose it at so many times in her career, but she just like poised, seems unbothered. But I just was hilarious. That's hilarious. Anyway, this here on screen is the nomination ballot wow. for the Minnesota Music Awards. This is very it's, I'm telling you, D'Angelo, man, she on it. You know, she's she's gonna get the get the stuff. So we'll, we'll spend a little second here. Here's some of the nominees uh, for this particular award. And of course, the ones we got spotlighted 
uh, 45 or EP of the year. My man, Andre Simone, nominated with Kelly's Eyes. Love it. Nice. nice. Kelly's Eyes. Kelly. <sighs> Andre don't get enough. Uh, whatever with that. He don't get yeah. enough. Love SEI. And he does, but. We he kinda, deserves more. Yeah. Yeah, we should maybe be diving into his albums and talking about them. That'd be dope. Uh, Little Red Corvette, Prince nominated. Uh, the Walk. Oh, the yeah. Time is on there. In 1999. Prince. So those are for 45 or EP of the year. Album of the year, we can see that what time is it by the time it's nominated? 1999 by Prince. Band of the year, we got Prince and the time. And then, of course, in musician of the year, we've got Prince listed there. Um, you know, I'm just to read some of the names. Peter Hamelin, it says Susan Lawrence, Steve Kramer, The Wallets, Peter Plath, Snaps, uh, Chan Poling, uh, the suburbs, and then Will Summer from Tropic Zane. Yeah, that's real local. I've heard of the suburbs. I know the suburbs. I, that's exactly yeah. what I was going to say is I yeah. know the suburbs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So these were the cats that was popping in the town back in 83. Suburbs are still around. They still play. Okay. Uh, nominees uh, for best key keyboardist. Oh, I see Ricky Pe Peterson. Yeah, Ricky Peterson. TC Jams. The I guess to a Twin City Jammers like that. Hilarious. Shout out to the Peterson family. Uh, bassist, we see we've got our guy Andre Simone up there. It's all good. Yeah. Terry Lewis. Nice. And then Billy Peterson. I assume he might be related to St. Paul and, and Ricky. The St. Paul is dope, I, too. Yeah, I think they're, yeah. I will um, say that the Peterson family, man, they name talented. Ranked. Talented. That town. You know, uh, and no then love a, for Brown Mark. That's that's interesting. Which is, is crazy. that appointed? Mm. Is that appointed uh, mm. <laughs> omission? <laughs> they still was like, you know that um, most people say that he played the most like Prince, and maybe they just thought, well, that's like Prince, so we don't need to actually mention that. Yeah, uh, but he's good. He's super good. Okay, okay, and then uh, drummer, we have our guy Bobby Z, nominated. Shout out to Bobby. Um, all right, we're going to keep going. So male vocalists. Alex. Alex. Alexander um, O'Neill. Messed up his own bad with that attitude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, he was he his new his value. Now. That's I'll what he his value. If you <laughs> haven't read uh, Alexander O'Neill's memoir it's a it's 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 a good read. It's a it's a real messy read. So I, I, I highly that. recommend that. Okay, I'm going to check that. Ricky Peterson. There's a whole chapter about his his stint on Big Brother, which really? uh, which en which ended uh, with him using a slur against Perez Hilton and getting kicked off of the <laughs> the show. Oh my god! <laughs> so oh, so there's no. some Got there's some dirt movie. from the Prince era, and then there's there's some Continue real good stuff dirt. from from later on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you're if you like a trashy <laughs> memoir, Alexander O'Neill. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. I, I Alexander O'Neill was on Big Brother. Yes, he was. <laughs> I think it was in the UK, maybe. I think it was because okay. he lives in England now. Yeah, I know um, he was, he was, yeah, he was money over there. Yeah, <laughs> interesting <laughs> man. Okay, uh, Ricky Peterson also nominated Prince, of course, JD Steele. Okay, so salute to them, gospel artist and band, the JD Steele singers nominated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. R&B, yeah, R&B soul ethnic band. <laughs> <Duane. Okay. laughs> All right, it was a time. Yeah, yeah, that was a little different, different, yeah. <laughs> different time. <laughs> ethnic. Oh, I feel wow. like we would have gotten it just from R&B and soul, but I you guess know, they wanted like, to be real specific. <laughs> really specific. <laughs> That's some funny style stuff back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, record producer nominated Andre Simone. Living in a new way. Man. Prince, 1999. Uh, engineer, David Rifkin. Mm -hmm. But he's nominated for the Andre Simone work. Um, so that's very interesting. Uh, jazz instrumentalist, Billy Peterson on bass, nominated. M a female vocalist, ooh, Margaret Cox. Nice. Who, of course, goes Margie. on to be Tamara from Tomorrow's yeah. Scene. Um, Nice. Hattie Peterson nominated Peterson family and then Sue Ann once again 
that's somebody I, I need to need to catch up with sue ann yeah yeah i'd love to hear what's going on with her and what went on yeah she's okay. been pretty quiet since 2016 actually it's a, yeah, really i don't okay I, I don't i don't think i've heard uh has she been interviewed for any of this stuff i i, I i'm not i'm not aware it's coming to mind it hasn't yeah, yeah. Not aware um and then here's some of the credits uh for the program well, and we're just gonna say salute to y'all and keep it moving. <laughs> and here's the program of, of how things went. Looks like uh, I see the JD Steel Singers performed. Patterson or uh, Patty Peterson to the performance, or maybe they're presenting these awards. Maybe that may be more of what I'm looking at. But here's something interesting. This is an ad. <clears throat> It looks like this. Uh, maybe it was a record store called the Wax Museum or something. Uh huh. That's, but that's uh, like this that. is basically saying, "Hey, you can get some of the nominees from the uh, Minnesota Awards here. That records are on sale along with some of these other superstars. Uh, the best music from here in Minnesota, there and everywhere. And of course, you can see they got controversy spotlighted on there." Uh, Andre Simone living in a new way. Andre was hidden, man. Like they were showing him love. I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, flash dance Mon soundtrack. Flash dance. <laughs> what was the name flash of that dance. song? Is it Michael Sumberlo or something? What was it? <laughs> or something? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> the man he had. Man. Oh, Michael yeah. Bolton. What's his name? Oh no! I, I just see there's a Michael Bolton album on the, uh, oh, on the grid there. Michael Bolton. His hair is taking up the whole album. <laughs> <cover>. <laughs> yeah, these these are some arrhythmics. Yeah, this is some good stuff. This is, and look at the prices. Yeah. <laughs> Five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. Dang. Yeah. And I was kind of like that was, was kind of high. Like I was a little like. <laughs> Can I get my parents to get me six dollars? I have to go get one album. Yeah, that's forty dollars oh. for a for a new pressing. <laughs> Michael Sim Simbello. 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 Yeah, Maniac. That was man. That was a staple on MTV back then. What was old girl's name? I should. Uh, Jennifer Wheels. Um, yeah, Jennifer Wheels. Mm, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right keep going here uh i think we're giving out some some shout outs uh nicole if i'm saying this gentleman's name correctly this must be his new you got some new uh music out no more waiting uh, so salute to him if y'all want to check that out friend of the show friend of the community just a i've seen audience. in the comments that um sue ann carwell is going to be performing in um minneapolis celebration week so that's that's oh, okay. great that's mm -hmm. awesome let me see, let me see that. i just want somebody to, and, and rodney says she's been on clubhouse a couple of times so okay. yeah I, I just i wish somebody would interview her you know like um i, I we've heard so much from like you know chris moon <laughs> chris moon is like mm -hmm. we almost have to get him to stop talking but but uh oh. some of these people I, I would love to just hear from them while wow, Jennifer Beals auditioned for Purple Rain. Ooh. Ah, uh, that's right. I remember. Yeah, mm. I heard that. Ooh. That would have been interesting. That would have been interesting. Like I said the main person that's interviewed Sue Ann is Tanya. Get oh, shout out to Tanya. Okay. For I'll the check Purple that out. That's lunch. awesome. Yeah, yeah, right on. Okay, I believe there's some other interviews on YouTube. Okay, yeah, shout out to cool. Tanya. Cool. Absolutely. All right. Also. Listen, we're going to give a lot of love and respect to Bill Lee, uh, his father of Spike Lee. Uh, and uh, we said he was a musician. Jazz musician. He played double bass. Yeah. He, he was, yeah. On a lot of the soundtrack. He, he played double bass. Yeah. So, man, what? 1928 to 2023. Man, what a lot. 1928. Ooh, he saw lots. Yeah, that's right. 1928. Yeah, that's. <sighs> Can you imagine? A lot. Yeah. Can you imagine? And then yeah. to see your son turn into one of the greatest, in my opinion, one of the That's greatest amazing. directors ever. Like, yeah. And then have your son takes your music 
Yeah. And embeds it in his mm. work. Like uh, that Mo Better Blue soundtrack. I actually have that. My dad had it when I was a kid mm. and I bought it as an adult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 No, that's that one's a good one. That's cold. Man. So salute to Bill Lee. Oh man, I love it. I love the father-son dynamic. So I'm just feeling that. And of course, mm. oh. Tina Turner. Man. Yeah. I, I thought she was gonna live forever. Right? Yeah. Absolute legend. Absolutely. What isn't there much you can say? Uh, but just I remember see so the thing is I you know, I was telling I was telling my daughter, you know, it's like Tina Turner. I remember when What's Love Got to Do with It came out, the like the song. Mm -hmm. And I remember as a young person, like I just knew that she was from a different time but it was yeah. like it was hard for me to understand i was like wow she seems like young now like i didn't you know what yeah. I mean? like, she's a new artist but i knew she wasn't and it was just an odd thing like she came out and killed it and she was big like just as huge mm -hmm. as any other artist and i was just like yo and I, at the time i thought she was kind of older but now i realized she was like in her 40s yeah she was like 43 44 which is interesting i was yeah. a little kid and i remember my mom uh -huh. saying it was a comeback it's like you know yeah. she's a middle-aged woman it's like and i remember <laughs> thinking yeah she is a grandma i actually remember i feel bad right now i remember thinking but i was a little guy <laughs> right and looking at it now i'm like oh, man, man she was she bad. was yeah damn, I yeah was. yeah <laughs> and she stayed that way for a long time yeah, yeah. absolutely man that's so yeah salute to her man just everything she had to go through uh, to get yeah. to where she was and what she just means to uh, not only women, but to just us as a people, us as a, a, a country, <clears throat> just everything is, is an artist. To some young uh, British rock stars like Mick Jagger. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On his way up, you know. It's That's never my, too late. Yeah. My extremely white mom is torn up about it. She's, oh. she, she, <laughs> it hit her hard. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Tina Turner. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's everybody. Yeah, the legs. That's what. That's yeah, what my amazing. mom is. <laughs> what? Yeah. What a. What a. Um, just a testament to, and I'm gonna say this correctly. I mean, she was sexual, but it wasn't like gratuitous or. No, no. it was, it was a powerful, was classy. Yeah, it was like it was powerful and fierce, and she was a hundred percent in control of it. It was very. Mm. God, I don't even know how to put it. It's hard to put into words, but it was all her own thing for sure. Mm -hmm. If you go back and, and look at some of the older things, it's amazing. It's just amazing. Just the first few notes of her voice. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, man. Tina Turner. And, you know, if you haven't had an opportunity to listen to some of her stuff or watch any of her videos, take this opportunity now and just soak it in be like yeah this is great or even if you just go and watch the movie yeah. uh you know which you know, i love me some angela watch. bassett oh my yeah. god she was amazing yeah <laughs> and yeah it's, it's almost and then that's the part two of you know of artists that are just incredible is when their stuff spawns the next yeah other people's careers sort of spawn off yeah. of that angela yeah. bassett said it changed her life she said that that film changed her life and you see mm. where her career has gone since then she should have mm. been won an award for that performance but that's neither here nor there she was amazing that she's my favorite actress yeah and angela bassett embodied she did Tina Turner. she movie. really did she really did <laughs> right. i so went back and watched it this past week and it's still you feel all there are certain parts of it i just i cannot watch but right. you definitely feel it you you feel it mm. and i when I, because I was younger, my parents took me to see that at the uh, theater. My mom was a huge Tina Turner fan, mm. and I just remember not realizing, wait, this isn't actually Tina Turner. This is an actress. Oh, okay, so right. they show Tina Turner at the end. I'm like, oh yeah, that wasn't actually <laughs> really her because she was so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, even even uh uh I think was was he still Larry Fishburne back then? <laughs> back then, I think he was still Larry. I think yeah. he was still Larry. It was before the Lawrence. Yeah, before my man. <laughs> He just went. That might have been off. what moved him, what upgraded him to Lawrence was, I don't was know, that role. He maybe. was acting his butt off in that. Yeah. Thing. He was so yeah. terrible. I hated him. His, and then uh, when he switched to Lawrence, he became kind of 
Super maybe Chick -fil -A. that's maybe that's why because that was such a you you associated him with all that Ike Turner mess. Maybe yeah, yeah, that. yeah. That's fair. He might have needed to to pull away from that because. And he did. Um, Mike, I could have my things. Did Deep Cover come before or after? Oh, Deep Cover. Well, so I don't know what year that was. Because he was good in that, but he was a very despicable guy in that movie. He used to really, now he was really good in Boys in the Hood and he wasn't despicable. So he had a thing where he That's did true. some yeah. pretty good stuff and then he became Lawrence, who just never was, Let me go be Morpheus <laughs> so I could be a hero. You know, like, yeah, yeah. You know, everything changed. <laughs> yeah, but my point to say is that movie, I mean, if you if you want to have a biopic made of your life and it done right, that's going to yeah. be a blueprint to be like, there's some actors that can really go in and almost, like you say, almost become the characters. And some, yeah, as a kid, I thought that kind of was, it's hard to differentiate between yeah. Tina Turner and it's like, oh, but she, uh, she handled it. I love that Tina was involved with her. Mm -hmm. Like they spent time together before she made the film and then Tina, Tina Turner and Angela Bassett were promoting the film together and all that. I, I love all of that. It's amazing. Um, Kim mentioned in the comments. There's also, oh yeah, there, there we go. I gotta oh, watch. I, I, did, I hadn't watched this yet, and now I, I feel it. like I have to watch it. You should watch it. You will learn yeah. even more than there. Are, you probably feel like you know everything, and then there's right, these right. small details that you go like, what? Right. I call people. I'm watching the documentary. Going, right. Mama, did you know? <laughs> and then even just to see the footage of, oh, yeah. of her, I think you know, yeah, it's worth it's it. Got to be amazing. Okay. Some amazing uh, photos and stuff like that. The one thing that I will say, because I saw somebody talking about it in the comments, um, the stuff about Ike, when she was doing the touring with Angela Bassett for the film, and even far beyond that, like they had been divorced for decades, people would still ask her about him and what was going on with him and that kind of stuff. And you could see in her face and she talked about it. Basically, it was like PTSD she would mm -hmm. remember what she mm -hmm. went through when it came up. And I, it, it made me sad for her that people kept like years later, oh, I got arrested. What are you telling her for? Like they're, <laughs> they, they don't deal with each other anymore, right. but they yeah. would do that to her in public, mm -hmm. in front of cameras, you know, and she, she handled it. She handled it very well. You could tell she wasn't happy, but she was what I call the laugh to keep from crying. She kind of laugh it off to a mm -hmm. little joke and then go on to something else. But in mm -hmm. her interview, she talked about how it bothered her. So mm. that, that documentary is definitely worthwhile. And she had, had everything to do with it. Everybody should see it. Cool. All right. Cool. Yeah. I, I just watched, I got halfway through so far, the Donna Summer uh, I need to check that documentary. Out. And I didn't what know you about her. And I was kind of blown away of basically what her image was and then how she, the person that she was, it seemed to be totally different. And I okay. just got to understand. I was like, wow. Okay, I just saw her as this glamorous star. So this sort right. of her. You know uh, what's funny about you saying that is in the movie in What's Love Got to Do With It. When Tina is about to do her comeback, I turn her tail, so you ain't no Donna Summers. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That was when he was off that narcotic, right? Was I, that, exactly. that was the, yeah. <laughs> I was wild. Here. He actually <laughs> said that's <laughs> hater personified. You know? <laughs> and then look how it turned out. All right. Right, right. But yeah, salute to Tina Turner. Yeah. Absolute legend. All right. And then, of course, uh, there's a playlist uh, for a lot of the songs that are mentioned throughout the book, our book club experience. You can go onto the website here on YouTube and actually listen to those. So, like, you see G Spot is up there, uh, there's a couple different versions. Actually, there's three different versions up there. So, definitely, this is, you know, when you, when you, we talk about it, then you go back and do your Googles. Deanna has already got it. <laughs> so that's great. That's great. Nice. Vibe out and listen to this stuff. And uh, was that it? Uh oh. I think that might have been it. Oh, you know what? I clicked on one of the songs. So there we go. Uh, we're not going to play that. And all right. So for next week, we're going to be on pages 91 and 94. Uh, so there'll be some good stuff in there. I haven't even looked to see what's coming up on that, but I'm sure it's going to be exciting. Uh, good things going on. That was it for the slide. So we're going to come back to the video before we get up out of here. And first, let me say thank you to everybody in the chat. I wasn't able to look at it as much as I should have been because I was talking and stuff. 
but we're definitely reading and we appreciate it. But we're not out of here just yet. Since I got these people here, we want to keep, we'll have a little more conversation if we can, um, just for a brief second. And what was I wanted to ask you? So we just talked about G Spot Vibrator. What's going through my mind is uh, whatever year we would have been when these songs had came out, was your mind ready for the concepts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, sir. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna sit this one out. Like, you said the age we were with. Never mind. Just, never well, mind. That, that's your answer. <laughs> I mean, well, then, you know, well, obviously, we're maybe we're not, but oh man, that's hilarious. <laughs> you know, the thing I always feel like there's a part of the Prince's songs that I mean, as much as we talk about, we love. We love all, I love all this stuff, but you know some of this stuff is is interesting. Sort of the lanes he was going down, uh, and I just sometimes wonder, like, like man, I always wonder, like, what the people around him think about it. And we've heard, you know, even I guess people like Dez is like, yo, it's kind of getting a little too crazy, you know, a little wild for me. Like I'm kind of conflicting this. Um, I, I just I, so I'm just asking. I, I didn't pre-plan this, so I'm just kind of going off the top of my head um but i love these songs but uh you know i'm a man i can yeah i, I love i don't know I, I mean when it came out i didn't really understand what vibrator meant like i didn't mm. i was like what is that like i don't what's a vibrator and i didn't think anything about it g-spot i remember when the song came out at the age i was at that time and probably some grown men could probably say this I didn't know nothing about that. I either. think there's a lot of grown men that can say that right, right now today. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Do Sorry. Ten. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I just had no idea. I just knew it, it was funky. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I'm just singing it. I, I, I guess if I'm, I can remember when I would play this song and I'd be singing it, but I guess I didn't really know what the hell I was playing. I'm curious if there were other people that are around me who were probably like, what did he say in that song? I'm the chase spot. Where, where could you be? And some lady was like, it's over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 so I'm just going to opening the floor, if you would. Well, yeah, I, mean, I, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of repeating myself a little bit, um, but because I, I said something similar on the last time I was on this this show, but I don't remember how it came up, but I mean, I, one thing that I think about as a parent now is, mm. um, that honestly, there are worse things. There's a lot worse things for a kid to be exposed or I mean, define kid, but you know, somebody who's maybe like starting to reach puberty or whatever, and starting to become more aware of their sexuality. And I, I honestly think that a, a lot of I wasn't, I got into Prince when I was already older. So I'm mm. not really speaking from direct experience, but I, I do know that I feel like if, if I have kind of toxic or negative ideas about women or, or sex, none of them came from Prince, you know? Right. And I think most of his songs that are, they might be explicit, but they're usually have a pretty positive attitude to them. You know, and I, I think it, like, um, you know, I, I think that's one reason why women respond so much to, to Prince is that it, exactly. it doesn't make you feel bad, right. you know, and I and I think that it's can be a good thing for a man, you know, a straight man who's coming into his mm -hmm. sexuality to be listening to Prince and not, you know, like Motley Crue or something. <laughs> uh, you know, I, th I think you're you're just way of being uh sexual is going to be i think uh just more positive that's so that's just agree. my i agree and i'll just say this because i'm a person who got introduced to prince by my parents so and my dad wasn't he didn't do a lot of the bootlegs and stuff like that but i do remember like international lover and certain there were certain songs where 
they were saying things I did not know what those meant at the time. But for some reason, my parents let me listen to it and sing it. <laughs> but it did not turn out to be a negative thing. And I, and I 100% agree with Zachary in terms of it being positive towards women and drawing women in because it sounds like this is a person who actually gives a dog on how I feel when I'm in this relationship. Yeah. And yes, dudes, check this out. So you know how to treat me. <laughs> We're in this relationship. So yeah. Yeah. I, I and the stuff that you. wasn't positive, you know, like uh, the, there's some really obvious examples like the lust you always and the extra lovable and that, that stuff very notably did not come out, you know, and I think I think there's a reason for that. I think he, yeah. even he knew that, okay, this is too much, you know, this, I, I pushed it too far. Mm, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, just rule said my brother was a DJ, but only made underground mixtapes for us to hear, which dad and mom wasn't aware of. <laughs> Doomy baby was a shock to my oh, ears. Man, but I enjoyed the vibe. I love that song. One of the best. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you know, but my dad would only listen to the Melissa Morgan version of that for some reason. <laughs> oh, really? Well, yes. not, I, I'm I serious. And that you want to hear a woman saying that? Yeah, to, I'm, I'm serious that he would only listen to that version. I ain't mad at it. So, so, salute to Melissa Morgan. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, Seely dropping with us. A prince never asked a woman to do anything that he wouldn't do. He paraded around in his draws, pouting for attention before he asked his women to do so. Also, he was often vulnerable in the songs. That's fair. Good point. Good point. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the payoff. Uh, again, I want to thank both of y'all. Let me start. Ladies first. Violet, thank you so much for joining us today, coming on here. We so appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Zachary, sir, thank you. For, for making this easy for me and jumping on as well and bringing your <laughs> insights. We appreciate you, sir. Yeah, it's also, great. But thank you. Also, we want to shout out D'Angela, wherever you are out there, be safe. Home is waiting for you. We're going to see you next week. You know, thank you for letting me uh, guide the ship, as they say. And of course, to all of the people in the chat, thank you so much. Everyone who's going to watch this later today or tomorrow or whatever, thank you so much. If you could help us out, please like and subscribe, spread the word. We want the rest of the Prince fan community out there to get up on this. And it's a fun place. We have a good time every Saturday. But like I always say, work it like a job. I'm going to see you next time.